The Night Beat starts right now. Arctic air brewing to the north of us. I mean, we're talking temperatures right now in Canada at 40 below zero. That colder air is headed our way. We're going to talk about when it gets here and how cold it'll be in just a bit. And the clock ticking towards the end of Title 42 is now on hold. The legal battle involving a measure meant to turn migrants away and the emergency operations underway in one border city. Plus, the Uvalde School District put to the test after the deadly mass shooting. After seven months of planning, money and DPS troopers, an audit revealed a shortfall within the district. But first, below freezing temperatures are on the way for San Antonio. The city now announcing measures to help keep the lights on and also to keep unsheltered people warm. Yeah, CPS Energy says it has strengthened the resiliency of its power plants with winterization initiatives. The city also preparing warming centers already. The seven warming centers will open Thursday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Anyone coming to the, sh to the center should bring clothes, supplies, and medicine. There will also be kennels available at Normoil, Southside Lions, and the Garza Warming Centers. A meteorologist Adam Kasky also tracking this cold front. So, Adam, let's talk about the timing in particular. Yeah, it looks like Thursday afternoon. That's when the colder air is going to start spilling into town. When I say colder air, this is the core of the cold air. And you're talking 40 below in Fort Nelson, Canada. You get to Fairbanks, Alaska, 36 below. Even Prince George in Western Canada, 33 below. Well, that core of the cold air is plunging southward and will get clipped by this cold air mass. But even just getting clipped by it is going to have a significant impact on our temperatures. Not first thing Thursday morning. Actually, I do think it's going to be pretty mild to start the day on Thursday. It's later on when the temperatures start to fall off. Notice at 6 a.m. Thursday, we're in the 40s, but up in Amarillo, 14 degrees. Even by the noon hour, we're at 66 degrees on Thursday. I'll be back in a little bit to talk about just how cold it's going to get once that cold front moves through, how low the morning lows will be, and when temperatures rebound a bit coming up. Adam, thank you. And you know, to those of you watching, this is really the perfect opportunity to remind you to download our Weather Authority app. You could just scan that QR code that you see right in between Adam and Mike. Uh, that app is going to help you track the temperatures right from your phones. So you're also going to be, we're also going to be checking with meteorologist Adam Kasky throughout this newscast. Meanwhile, let's go to the border now. In the very latest, emergency operations underway in the border city of El Paso tonight is all centering around Title 42, a measure that allows migrants to be turned away before they seek asylum. While the Supreme Court is keeping the measure in place right now, we've still seen a large number of people fleeing violence or political turmoil in their home countries. Just last year, Del Rio saw a flood of migrants legally seeking asylum, many taking shelter under an international bridge, many of them from the country of Haiti. In another area of the border, the city of El Paso, hoping to avoid a similar situation if Title 42 is lifted and the number of migrants rise. Republican Texas Congressman Tony Gonzalez filmed this conditions inside a crowded processing center in El Paso. This was Friday. Last week, El Paso saw about 2,500 migrants daily. Tonight, the city says that's decreased and that many are being processed, then travel to their host families in other parts of the country. But El Paso's mayor is preparing for the numbers to rise again. We want to make sure that we're prepared. Uh, we have had, uh, we've heard that numbers are really big. Uh, in uh, Mexico right now in waters and uh, there's probably over 20,000 over there today that are waiting for Title 42 to be lifted. Now there are concerns an increase could overwhelm El Paso's airport. Catholic Charities helping bus some migrants to Houston's airport to help them get a flight out of that hub instead. The city hopes to expand that program to other airports. No word on San Antonio is one of them. El Paso's mayor already declared a state of emergency, allowing them to request state services. They also requested staff, law enforcement, and transportation from the state. They're also considering mass shelters. Among the options, private warehouses and school district facilities. The federal government reimbursing the city and county of El Paso. The county says they've received $3 million. The city expecting a $6 million check to clear this week. Leaders there saying immigration affecting much more than just El Paso, though.
Now let's switch gears and talk about Uvalde. That city facing a test tonight. The school district was audited to test how well it keeps out intruders. Now this test is coming nearly seven months since the shooting at Robb Elementary. The night team's Lee Waldman was at tonight's school board meeting where the results of that audit were revealed. The amount of money we've been working with in district on all of these projects that we're going to sell line is about $4.9 million. Almost $5 million in grants and funding spent by Uvalde CISD on safety and security changes. Money spent on fencing, police department equipment upgrades, cameras, doors, and salaries. But the work isn't done yet. Zero percent completion because those have been back ordered. We run into supply chain issues, materials issues. Interim Superintendent Gary Patterson explained the effort to install secured vestibules on all campuses is currently on hold. Those bullet resistant materials are difficult to get right now, and that's why this uh, the vestibules have been delayed. Monday, we learned the district was subject to an intruder detection audit mandated by Governor Greg Abbott. All of the exterior doors were locked. However, an intruder was able to get into one campus's cafeteria because the door didn't latch. A staff member reported the intruder shortly after. The delivery of goods and to loading docks was just something, quite honestly, that uh, I overlooked. But I won't overlook the next thing. Patterson reiterated the district is in the process of hiring a new police force that will have active shooter training. Berlinda Ariola, grandmother to victim Amory Joe Garza, asked that the state troopers on campus pay better attention during their patrol. She shared this picture of an officer sitting on his phone. Now, another, another, whatever you want to call it, was done, and another one of the schools, somebody just walked right in, and this is probably why, because they're not paying attention to our students. Patterson talked about a security center where all the cameras installed on campuses can be monitored in one place. He says nothing like that existed here before, so they're in the process of building it. The next time the board meets will be in January of 2023. Any Valdi, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. New tonight on the night beat, a woman cornered in her own driveway. Barry County deputies say that two cars then pulled up behind her. That's when they say two men got out, assaulted her, and shot her in the arm. Happened south of San Antonio near Highway 16 and Kings Row. Investigators, though, haven't given a motive. The woman, though, she's in the hospital. Police haven't said if they've arrested anybody in this case. Now for a look at some of today's big headlines in your Nightbeat News Flash. Charges against former President Donald Trump being referred to the Justice Department. The House Select Committee investigating the January 6th attacks made those referrals. This was after a vote they took during their final public meeting today. They concluded that former President Donald Trump ultimately responsible for the insurrection. Attorney General Merrick Garland will make the ultimate call on whether or not to prosecute. Here at home, two teens, one gun, a lot of trouble. Now San Antonio police trying to find out exactly what happened. A 16-year-old male shot in the chest on Marbach Road near West Military Drive on the west side. Investigators say a 17-year-old had the gun. He told them he thought it wasn't loaded and that the safety was on. Right now he's facing an aggravated assault charge, the 16-year-old in the hospital tonight. Two of the country's biggest pharmacy chains now limiting certain medications. They say the outbreak of respiratory viruses is to blame. Both CBS and Walgreens limiting the purchases of children's pain relief products. Walgreens will allow six over-the-counter purchases. CVS will allow customers to buy just two pain relief products, either online or in person. CVS says it's also working with its suppliers to meet demand. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. And still ahead on the night, the, the delivery window is closing. How COVID is affecting holiday deliveries and the last minute deadline that you don't want to miss if you're sending packages for Christmas. And our colder air is slated to arrive Thursday afternoon. No snow with this cold air, just sunshine and clear skies. Not like February of 2021. We're going to make a comparison for you between the two events coming up in a little bit and show you just how low those temperatures are going to go coming right up. Talk about a terrifying drop. A couple crashes into a canyon several feet below ground. They say they're lucky to be alive because of the feature on one of their phones. We're going to hear from them coming up next right here on the Night Beat.
Tomorrow on the Night Beat, a local officer dedicated to mental health. Just seeing the signs, the symptoms, listening to them. Specifically in the community of Bernie. I learned how to listen very well. We ride along with Officer Rebecca Foley, who's the department's entire mental health unit. How she's making changes one year since the program's launch. That's tomorrow on the Night Beat. This essay salutes holiday greeting is brought to you by Gomez Law Firm. Hi, I'm Matt Powell, and on behalf of Jose Rios, Tony Garzavale, and everybody here at the Gomez Law Firm, we'd like to wish all of our military and veterans a happy holidays. Happy, happy holidays. holidays. Their car plunged off the side of a mountain road, but one couple says an iPhone saved their lives even when they couldn't call for help. That crash happened last week in California's Angeles National Forest. Did you see their car? I'm going to see it here pretty soon. It was sitting wheels up at the bottom of a canyon. That's it right there. There was no cell service in the area, but an SOS feature on the passenger's new iPhone 14 led rescuers to the crash site. Immediately the phone said crash detected. Um, emergency services have been contacted and that's where we like started and I was like, when did this get? <laughs> and it was like a shock to see that and all we had to do is like follow the satellite. Chloe Field says her boyfriend lost control of the car while trying to let another driver pass. First responders say they fell about 300 feet. The couple dealing with a concussion, neck pain, some cuts and bruises as you can see on Chloe. But they're expected to be okay. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. New on the night beat between holiday cards and packages. This is really the busiest time of year for the U.S. Postal Service. So time is running out if you need to send packages that you want to arrive by Christmas Day. The night team's John Paul Barajas tells you how much procrastinating your post office trip is going to wind up costing you. The holidays have nearly doubled business for the U.S. Postal Service. Employees here in San Antonio are processing 310 to 320,000 items a day. Nothing compared. This month is just crazy. Like during the year, we just work six, eight hours. Sometimes we get to go home at four hours because there's not much, especially on Sundays. And right now it's been crazy. The bells are full the whole entire week. USPS officials say this is what they plan for. That for to meet demand includes adding processing equipment and an extra 170 employees locally but they're also dealing with the unexpected. The relaunch of the free at-home COVID testing kits is only added to the busy holiday season. These two conveyor belts alone are just strictly COVID testing kits. They started shipping these out four days ago. By tomorrow morning, they'll shipped out more than 160,000 in San Antonio. We've been handling it just fine. Again, we got some additional package uh, sorting equipment in. Uh, that has enabled us to increase our capacity to about 380,000 packages per day. Distribution Center Manager Kim Calderon says with processing centers moving smoothly, all you have to do to get a gift where it needs to be by Christmas is to ship on time. Pack it well and make sure we have a good, clean um, address label on there. Now, the deadline for first class and priority mail have already passed, but if you want to get a gift or a package to a loved one by Christmas Day, you can still do that by shipping with Priority Express Mail. Now, the deadline for that is this Friday, December 23rd, and it will cost you extra depending on the size of the package and how far it has to travel. As for post offices, some of them do have extended hours. This one by the airport is open until 10 o'clock at night. We'll have a full list of other post office hours on our website, ksat.com. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, get that going. Other news. Thanks to you, dozens of local families are going to get the special holiday that they deserve. So we want to show you the Big Love Holiday Shop. So many of you donated gifts and, and just donated things to make this event possible. A few weeks ago, we told you about the nonprofit Big Love Cancer Care. That's a group that helps families who have loved ones dealing with cancer. As you know, when you're caring for someone who has cancer, it really leaves you with little time or money. So this specific event helps families shop for Christmas gifts, which, by the way, they don't have to pay for so that their loved ones have gifts. And we're told, listen to this, that families picked up more than 800 gifts. When your child has cancer, you're robbed of so many choices and so much control. And we want to give that, that, that <laughs> we want to give that control back to these parents. We want to give them the option to, you're going to come shop and you're going to pick out exactly what you want to give your child this Christmas. 
Really, really cool, right? Now, so here's the best part. My favorite part about the story, 150 gifts were left over, and those gifts are going to be donated to families who have loved ones in the hospital and couldn't go to this weekend's event. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Way to go, all the people yeah. that donated the big love. All right, live camera right now, and it looks like it's kind of foggy yeah. out there. Maybe a little misty, Adam Kasky. Yeah, it is. We've got a little bit of mist fog developing, and that's going to be the case through the morning tomorrow. So anticipate the reduced visibility on the roadways. But generally speaking, quiet weather and not much to have to plan around the next few days. We'll just get right to it here. Tomorrow, we'll wake up to temperatures in the lower 40s, 43 degrees in town, 58 by the afternoon. We'll burn off that morning fog and have a few breaks in the clouds the rest of the day by Wednesday 41 in the morning 58 in the afternoon pretty straightforward for this time of year it all changes on Thursday let's get right to it and take a look at our temperature trend on Thursday yes we're fast forwarding in the morning sunrise not a big deal you will not wake up to this cold front on Thursday but you will go to bed to this cold front. Notice by the noon hour, we're in the mid 60s around San Antonio. Noon, one o'clock, mid 60s. That's right about when the front's going to arrive. And then quickly, temperatures will be falling drastically behind that front, and we should be around freezing a little after sunset on Thursday. And then that sets the stage for some teens as we get into Friday morning. More specifically, Friday morning, not only our first freeze here in town, but a hard freeze as well. Rio Medina could be as cool as 14, Seguin 17. We think 18 officially in San Antonio, but Bulverde, Bernie 12, Comfort, Kerrville 10. Here's the kicker too. We're going to have some leftover wind from that cold front. So through Friday morning, we're talking some wind chills periodically dipping down into the single digits for the first few hours of the day after sunrise. Notice these morning temperatures, another hard freeze on Saturday at 20, Sunday morning at 22. These are just morning temperatures. Afternoon temperatures will be above freezing. I mean, barely on Friday at 35, but by Saturday we're up to 40. Sunday, Christmas Day, yeah, chilly in the low 20s in the morning, but by the afternoon we should wake up to 60 degrees. Or I mean, we should, by the afternoon, we'll have 50 degrees and then getting a little closer to 60 the following week. This will not be like February of 2021. Here's a comparison. February of 2021, 107 hours straight below freezing. Say worst case scenario with this, maybe 48 hours in a few locations, but we don't even think that's going to be the case. Also, February of 2021, the crippling ice and snow, no precipitation with this one, no precip, just sunshine and clear skies. The coldest we got in 2021 was nine degrees. This time around, the coldest will be 18. Really quickly, 0.3 inches at the airport earlier today. Looks like 2022 will still go down as the second driest year to date. There's a look at the seven day that temperature plunge again. It's happening Thursday afternoon. Some gusts up to 40 miles per hour right behind that front and get ready for that chill, but no snow. I want to reiterate. Yes. no snow. We need to come up with something besides hard freeze, like maybe steel freeze or something. Rowdy freeze. <laughs> Rowdy freeze. There you go. Go Spurs. Yeah, I tell you what, this was a game they needed to have, and they dominated from start to finish against the Rockets, albeit the two worst teams in the West. It's still a win. When we come back, we'll show you how they did it. And a key injury could affect the Cowboys Eagles showdown on Christmas Eve. Coming up. For me, I just, I just want to say, you know, I will be declaring for the 2023 NFL Draft. Um, you know, it's, it's been such a blessing, you know, just being here. Texas star running back B. John Robinson makes it officially for going his senior season to make himself available for the NFL Draft and Big Board Sports. But first, it is game day. Our San Antonio Spurs at the road to renew their I-10 rivalry against the Houston Rockets. Kelton Johnson is out with tightness in his right hamstring. Good start for the silver and black, though. In transition, Devin Vassell spots up and drains a three. 6-0 San Antonio. A few plays later, Vassell backs it out to 
Kata Bates Dia for another triple, and they're leading right now 16 to 6, forcing the Rockets timeout. To keep it rolling, Jeremy Sohan fires a pass to Doug McDermott, cross court for a three ball. San Antonio leads 35 28 after one. Second quarter now, Rockets score 34 points to take the lead, but the Spurs answer back on the final play. Stanley Johnson is a three at the buzzer, and the Spurs enter halftime trailing 62 60. Third quarter, Spurs retake control of the game. Sohan comes up with a rebound, puts it back up and in 77 72 San Antonio. In final seconds of the frame, Bissell hits a step back three-pointer and San Antonio takes a 92-76 lead going into the fourth quarter. The Spurs keep up that pedal to the metal. The sell to Jakob Pertl on the pick and roll makes it 101-79 Spurs. Rookie Malachi Branham hits a mid-range jumper for a 105-83 lead. The Trey Jones finds Zach Collins for a long floater. Spurs score 32 points in the fourth quarter. They snap their two-game losing streak 124-105. What changed with the Spurs after halftime? Pop did into us. <laughs> he came into the halftime and, you know, he has those moments, but we needed it and it just brought the juice up back out of us. And, you know, we picked it up a lot on the defensive end, got us in transition and just started being more aggressive. All right, road trip continues on Thursday when they face New Orleans in New Orleans. The Spurs reported today that 45,000 tickets have been sold for the 50th anniversary game against the Golden State Warriors on January the 13th in the Alamo Dome. That's where the Spurs are hoping to break the all-time regular season NBA attendance record set by the Chicago Bulls and the Atlanta Hawks back in March of 1998 when 62,046 fans attended that game in the Georgia Dome in Michael Jordan's last regular season game as a member of the Bulls. And to help out, the Spurs made more $10 tickets available today. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Philadelphia Eagles may be without their star quarterback on their Christmas Eve showdown with the Dallas Cowboys. That's after Jalen Hurts suffered a sprain to his right throwing shoulder in their win over the Bears. Happened in the third quarter when Hurts, who's having a career year, was driven into the ground by Travis Gibson. Hurts now has combined 35 touchdowns, has tied Randall Cunningham for the most in franchise history. If Hurts can't go, it'll be the backup Gardner Minshew. With the Eagles still needing one more win to clinch the NFC East and home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs. This comes out of the Cowboys suffered an unexpected 30 to 24 loss in overtime to the Jaguars in Jacksonville after being up by many 17 points. Still Dallas qualified for the playoffs for the second straight season under head coach Mike McCarthy. How does that make him feel? Thankful or, you know, excited. It, it just, you know, I don't know how exciting it was because, you know, my wife woke me up to tell me we made the playoffs. But uh, so uh, <laughs> the, you know, we, we need to win the 11th game. All right, kick off on Christmas Eve in Arlington is set for 3.25 p.m. Texas star running back turning pro next. John Robinson, the All-American running back of the Texas Longhorns, has decided to forego his senior season to make himself available for the NFL draft. In three years on the 40 acres, the Doak Walker Award winner was able to rush for 3,410 yards to make him the fourth all-time leading rusher in UT history behind Ricky Williams, Cedric Benson, and Earl Campbell. And with him, projected to be the top running back selected in the 2023 draft and the money that goes along with that, was it really a difficult decision? Robinson's answer might surprise you. It was definitely a hard decision, um, and you know, for me, being a being a running back, you know, it's it's smart to, you know, keep the keep the wheels on your body, you know, fresh, you know, when you do want to go to the go to the NFL. And I thought that this was just you know the perfect time to to go endure that for sure. Um, but the reason why it was hard, you know, because I just love it here, and I just love everything about this place. You know, I love the, this fan base, the coaching staff, you know, the people here. And with today's announcement, that means Robinson will not participate in the Valero Alamo Bowl in the Alamo Dome on December the 29th when Texas meets Washington. Two former members of the Fighting Texas Aggies have found new schools thanks to the transfer portal. Quarterback Hayes King will be suiting up for Georgia Tech, and kicker Caden Davis has decided to take his talents to Ole Miss, both as graduate transfers. And don't forget, just coming up, we have the early signing day as well. There are two. Remember, there's one in December and now one in February. So we'll see who's going where early. All right. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. And we'll be right back after this.